Hey guys, Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba, once again with a topic that's going to blow your socks off. We're going to talk about weight belt buckles. <laughs> yeah, well, weight belt buckles are not a really big deal. You know, we all use them. Uh, if not on the weight belt, on the BCD or something. Uh, even on the most modern uh, backpacks and air cells we just talked about on my uh, tech tips. Was that tech tips? On tech tips, they use the same old buckle, weight belt buckles. But weight belt buckles in the old days, Vintage days, the Stone Age, as Kevin says, <laughs> were different entirely. Now, first of all, what's the big deal with weight belt buckles? Why well, you just put the darn weights on and tie them on? Well, it has been the accepted procedure with respect to weights that you should have them on a belt around your waist. That has changed somewhat in the last few years, although they even they even had some vintage systems set up whereby the weights were in the in the pack. We talked about that. But if you have a weight belt buckle, it's been the accepted tradition, procedure, if you like, if not a mandatory rule, that the weight belt must be on a quick release buckle. It must be on a quick release buckle so that you can instantly, quickly pull something or flip something and the weight belt falls off. Now, it's not stupid, not a stupid idea. Technically, it's the weights to keep you down, right? Uh, and, and if for some reason you don't want to be down, Technically, you get rid of the weights and you won't be down. However, that's personally, person, it's just me personally talking, okay? And this is not Alec Pierce, the instructor or the educator, it's just me personally talking. Weight belt buckles and quick release buckles are a little bit overblown, in my own personal opinion. I started diving in 1958, and I have religiously, maybe once or twice I didn't, but let's say religiously in five, six, seven thousand scuba dives over those many years, had my weights on a quick release buckle. And I have never released them underwater. Okay, so my point is this the odds of you having to drop your weight belt, in my opinion, are so slim that whether or not you have a quick release buckle is personal choice. Now, that may already cause some problems in your mind, but work with me on it. What I want to talk about today, however, is not the philosophy, the theory of, of quick-release buckles, but the different types of quick-release buckles, because they've changed a great deal, and they have improved. I can, I'm going to show you. First of all, Kevin, did you find that picture of, of that really early one with the double loops? I'm going through, okay. All right, so here's a picture I'm going to show you. Kevin's going to put a picture on here that shows probably the earliest type of weight belt buckle, certainly a uh, weight belt buckle had a quick release. And it consisted, as you can see in this picture that Kevin's got, it was used on tanks, bands, and it was used on weight belts. It consisted of a simple belt with two rings, just two rings on one end only. And the other end, you can see, in fact, in my open water class in 1960, my open water class, the instructor spent a half an hour explaining how to uh, thread the belt through the two rings, and then back through the one of the rings, so it left the tail, and you, you could cinch it up snugly on your body, but by yanking on that tail, the whole thing fell apart and the weights came out. Now, that's the very simplest one. It couldn't be any simpler than that. Two rings, and you just thread it properly, and you end up with a tail that you can pull. That's pretty simple. Now, they want to improve on that. They, people always want to improve. It's human nature to try to improve. So somebody said, well, you know, we can do a better job than that. That ring threading is a nuisance. We actually have to teach students how to do that. I mean, it's got to be simpler. So somebody came up. They sat down one night in their garage, and they had a whole bunch of old spring wire, and they fiddled and messed around until they came up with this device. This it was a very, very common very common quick release buckle for many, many, many years. And you can see what it is. It really is two pieces. On this end of the belt, there is basically a loop. A loop. That's all there is to it. Now it's held firmly to the belt by a slider. We still use sliders today, but there you go. So on one end of the belt is a loop. On the other end of the belt is this rather strangely but very important shaped buckle. We'll call this the buckle. And you see it has a very interesting shape. It has an, an, a, a tongue, we'll call that the tongue, and then it folds over like this. Well, how does this work? Well, it's very simple. And you may have seen this, some of you vintage divers have certainly seen it. You would simply take the loop, put it over the end, and then pull that down, and you see what happens? Because of the unique shape of the buckle, of the wire buckle, this part, 
because of that unique shape, the loop gets caught down on the bottom of the buckle, and pull on that as you might, they will not come apart. It won't come apart. That works very, very well. However, if you wanted to take it apart, end of the dive, or an emergency, you could simply lift on this. Take your hand, lift on the tongue, and as the tongue came up, see what happens to the loop? The loop slides off. So if you have tension on it, solid. Lift on the tongue, and falls apart. These were very, very common. As I say, they were used on, on, uh, on uh, tank harnesses for a long time and on weight belts for many, many years. Through the 50s, and I, I'm going to guess that probably these were very common into the 60s, late 60s, perhaps even into the 70s. However, they, were, they weren't perfect by any stretch. These uh, wire loops uh, had, a, had, a, had a tendency to twist and bend, and they, they sometimes they wouldn't hold, and other times they wouldn't release. So over a period of time, once again, people wanted to improve on them. So what they did do, well, they came up with other types of belt buckles. I wanted to show you just a couple here that are pretty unique. Now, <clears throat> this particular one was really popular. I'm going to tell you honestly that this, belt, this particular belt buckle wasn't popular because it was so good. It was actually quite similar to the wire safety buckle, uh, quick release buckle. But I think this is popular because it looked really neat. It just looked really neat. That's what it looked like when it was on your body. Large, chrome, strong, solid, wow, good buckle. How do they work? Well, very simple. This again has a tongue, watch. See the tongue on here? It's a two-piece buckle. This big thing here, and this little thing here. It's not unlike the wire buckle, is it? Except instead of being made of wire, it's made of actual plates of steel. So to put it together, you simply take this part, we'll call this the tongue now, put it through the slot, and push it in there, and pull on the belt. And it locks in place. Very, very strong. Very, very solid. And when you wanted to drop, get rid of the weight belt, once again, you just lift the tongue. Watch my finger here. Lift the tongue. And once it got to a certain point, the cam action let go, and it popped apart. See, it worked. It worked really, really well. Now, the other thing that's kind of neat about it, and I have to be honest, I used one of these for a number of years. It looked really cool. And I wanted to look cool. <laughs> I had a chrome tank. I had to have a chrome belt buckle, right? One of the other things that was very attractive about it, that made it popular, was this little hook down at the bottom. See the little hook down there? Right down there at the bottom. Zoom in there, Kevin, maybe. Make sure they see this little hook down here in the bottom. See it down there? Yeah. What was that all about? Well, that was a pretty neat little hook. And, and, and it was one of the reasons why these were popular, because you had a hook down there. What was the hook for? Well, not too sure. <laughs> it just looked really cool. And if you wanted to hook something on there, you could. So some divers, and you could, you could. And perhaps I did, I can't recall. Perhaps I did, because I used to have a safety float with me, and I, sometimes I had a, a, a catch bag, catch bag, you know, it's just a mesh bag. And you could, you could hook it in there, and it would hang there in front of you, or whatever you had. So you could hook things on it, maybe a reel. So it had a built-in hook for hanging stuff. So that was pretty neat. So that was a pretty popular buckle for a long time. Yeah. Now something else about this belt I want to mention as well. This belt's made of rubber. It's not like mesh belts today. You see that? Stretches. Stretches. Rubber belts were quite popular back then. I'm going to come back to that in just one minute. We'll talk about rubber belts. Before we do that, let's take a look at one more. Now, this particular belt is also unique. And this was actually sold as a weight belt buckle. This particular one was a weight belt buckle. And it's similar to the first two we've talked about briefly already, in that there's two pieces, large piece and this piece with the tongue. And once again, it just goes in there by a, some sort of a cam action, and you lift on the tongue, you see? And when you lift on the tongue, it falls apart like so. Uh, this one is cast aluminum, and it went together fairly easily, slide it through there, pull it down, and again, a very, very strong lift on the tongue, and it falls apart. So I don't only mention this because it's a, a little bit different. This one says made in England. Made in England. That might explain why it's a little bit different. Maybe some of you uh, English fellows over there, Simply Scuba, and you other guys over there that watch some of my videos, maybe you recognize this. It might be more common over there. But I wanted to mention this because this is reminiscent of a belt buckle that you use every day. Yeah, it's just like a seat belt buckle, isn't it? 
very much, if you recall, if you think back, not so much today, they're all automatic today, you stick them into a hole, but it used to be you had to have take two ends, like an aircraft, like on an airplane. You still do, you take two ends, and you put them together, and you snap them in. Well, you know, it wasn't uncommon for a scuba diver to use an aircraft or an automotive type seat belt buckle as a quick release. And they worked pretty well. They were easy to adjust, two parts snapped together, and it worked pretty well. They didn't last too long if you were in salt water because uh, they had springs and so on in them, but they worked pretty well. That's just reminiscent of that. All of these buckles had a problem. Besides being a little bit uh, complicated, bits and pieces and parts, and besides being made of metal, so they corroded and bent and broke and everything else, but they had another problem. If you take a look at them, you'll notice that in each case, it's a two-part buckle. One part is on one end of the belt, the other part is on the other end of the belt. You put your weights on, put the ends on, pull your tummy in, snap it together, and off you go diving. What's the problem? You know, here's the problem. You can't adjust them easily. You certainly can't adjust them underwater. You definitely can't adjust them underwater if you have a wetsuit on and thick gloves. It's not going to happen. You can't adjust them. Why would you want to adjust them? Well, you experienced divers. We talk a lot about buoyancy. Buoyancy has been a problem since the beginning of scuba diving, and it still is. We talk about buoyancy often on my tech tips. And you know that if you have a wetsuit on, and you have the proper amount of weight at the surface, and you start to descend, and you use your buoyancy compensator to adjust the weight so you stay neutral all the time, that's wonderful. And you get down to 30, 40, 50, 60 feet, and you're adjusted so you're neutral. That's wonderful. A bit of air in the BC overcomes the weight on the weight, but everything's fine. But you may notice there's a problem. Your weight belt is no longer around your waist. That's right. It's slipping down. And unless you have something down there called a waist to stop it from slipping down, pretty soon you find it's down around your ankles. That's right. Weight belts come up quite often. And that's exactly the most common way that you lose a weight belt. The wetsuit, you see, compresses. So <clears throat> the wetsuit, which is around your tummy, around your body, quarter of an inch thick, on each side, that obviously gives you a half an inch extra diameter, which is a lot in terms of circumference, three times as much almost, in terms of circumference. So the belt that fits you snugly and properly at the surface, at 60 feet, is loose. And all of these belt buckles, every one of these belt buckles, work on the principle of keeping pressure on it. If you don't keep pressure on it, it starts to fall apart. There has to be pressure on it to keep it locked in place. So the weight belt gets loose, starts to slip, the belt buckle may let go and you lose your weight belt. Not a good situation. Not because you lost a weight belt, who cares? But because now you have nothing keeping you down. You could, under control, rise to the surface. So that's not good. That, by the way, is one reason why the rubber belt was popular. Because you could use this belt, the rubber one, pull it snugly, make it nice and snug on your tummy, stretch it, snug on your tummy, as you descend it and your wet, wet suit compressed a little bit, the rubber compressed too. The rubber went back and, and it stayed snug on your body. It wasn't perfect, but it helped. So what's the difference? Well, let me quickly show you. I can show you the difference. If we just take one of these apart, it just takes a second. Why are the weight belt buckles today so good? Well, the weight belt buckles today are so good because <clears throat> they only have one end. Let me put this together really quickly. You've all seen this. This is a modern weight belt buckle. There it is. That's it. This one's made of metal. Personally, I think the plastic ones are better. Metal, people will argue with me about that, but if you drop a weight on this or a step on it, and you distort the metal a little bit, the tongue falls out. It's only held in there by a fraction of an inch. Tongue ball. Plus, they can corrode. Anyway, how's it work? Well, it's very simple. You take the end of the belt. See? Nothing on the belt. Nothing's on the belt. You take the end and you push it through. And it's not unlike these other ones. There's a cam action in there. The shape of this goes down, snaps down on the belt, and it's tight. You see? It's very similar in some ways, isn't it? Very similar. It's tight on your body. You want to drop it, you grab the tongue and pull it, it falls off. So what's the extra benefit of this? Well, the extra benefit is this. You put the weight belt on at the surface over your wetsuit and you snug it up. And you get down to 30 feet and you realize, geez, my weight belt is loose. Well, you simply do that and you pull it on the end, make it a bit tighter, snug it back up and snap it back close again. You can adjust this instantly, anytime, anywhere. So you're much, much less likely to lose a weight belt that has a modern one side only buckle on it like this. Much less likely. 
Oh, by the way, don't forget to loosen it on your way up. Or when you get to the surface <clears throat> and you have this squeezing feeling around the middle of your body, you might think you're having a heart attack. <laughs> no, you forgot to loosen your weight belt. Anyway, it can be done. That's the biggest thing about it. Anyway, there's some ideas on weight belt buckles. My thoughts on how important it is that you have a safety belt, and it is important, and how they developed over the years. And the old double loop, put the end through and pull it snugly, as we learned back in the 50s and 60s, and how they progressed over the years to come to the most modern buckle, the one piece, one side only, not one piece, but one side only belt, instantly adjustable anywhere. And today, I don't have one to show you, unfortunately, because this is a vintage scuba episode. So I don't have one of the new thermoplastic or cycle-lac belt buckles, virtually unbreakable, and, uh, and uh, that worked exactly the same as that metal one. Anyway, maybe there was something in there that caught your fancy and that you enjoyed. Okay, guys, Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba, talk to you again soon.